Okay. Uh, right off the bat, I got a cough. We gotta anyway. make body noises. Hello, everybody. This is a throwback. Oh, it's a throwback episode. episode. We're we're doing we're doing hey. a remote. I gotta take a, <laughs> I gotta take a picture. Remember this. Remember, when Remember we used this, to, everybody. Remember when we did this stuff? Uh, so yeah. I'm a little sick. So uh, this is. Why did it make a GIF? Can we not? <laughs> oh. Ew, I hate uh, that. I'm going to post it anyway. <laughs> it do it. Terrible. It's you smiling all stupid. <laughs> and it's like and it's like moving in a weird giffy yeah. way. Well, all my smiles are stupid, so it's not a, <laughs> not a surprise. Anyway, hello. How are you guys doing? 4 FPS Will is back, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully not. Yes, sir. Hopefully not. Uh, so yeah, I'm a little sick, so uh, I didn't want Will in my vicinity. So here we are. Mm-hmm. We're doing this. Uh, yes. I had to uh, scramble so- to get my streaming setup uh, optimal again, which because it has not been in a very long time. I have no room to move my mouse because there's oh, just a stack of paper over here. I'm um, sure it's looking fine. Office is still a mess, though. So there's that. You can't, see, you can't even see it. It's fine. Anyway, hello, everybody. Uh, we got a special thank you for DM. Thanks for the two months. My fave twins. Hello. Uh, Will Wolf, damn it, with the 45 months. <laughs> hey, Wolf Bros, did you know that Jeff Keighley is best friends with Hayao Kojima? I learned that from the Game Awards. It's totally not a one way friendship in any way. <laughs> one way friendship. I, mean, I don't know if you know this, but Jeff Keighley and Hideo Kojima are really good friends. And by that, I, I mean, know that it's very clear that Jeff Keighley wants to remind you that he's best friends with Hideo Kojima. And Kojima is just like, yeah, OK. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, here's my, here's my real best friend, Jordan Peele. <laughs> true. I mean, he got to announce his game. We're going to get into it. We're, We're going to get, get into it. it. I just I just wanted to get that off of my chest now before we get into the main topic hector bizen thank you for the 30 months e3 fe- fall started the day they leaked bob's info yeah you could say that uh professor <laughs> clockwork thanks for the 10 months yo wolf bros love the content as always i changed my name too many times whoops you- okay <laughs> i'm not gonna know who you are then yeah uh anyway i bet a hundred dollars that bob is going to tear e3 a new one i mean look we don't want to wish ill on the dead, but yeah. but rip bozo, can, you fucking idiot! <laughs> can you can you tear a new one on a corpse? Yeah, of course, absolutely. <laughs> uh, yeah, we're gonna talk about ETH. What else are we talking about today? Uh, we're gonna uh, talk we got the game awards. Apparently, we got There's, a jam packed show. We got the game awards. We, we got, got um, we got everyone's favorite topic. We got two of everyone's favorite topics. Mm, yeah. We got. Epic lawsuit, epic game lawsuit, yes. <laughs> and we got FTC Activision <laughs> again. Yeah, <laughs> everyone loves talking about that stuff. Yeah, so, uh, so we got that. We got uh, the day before fiasco. We're gonna tr- try our best to encapsulate all, everything that's going on with that. Uh, we got updates on Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League. We got, um, we got. Uh, more sad news in the gaming realm in terms of studios closing uh, and much more. <laughs> oh, George McFarlane says, what about Retroid? I forgot about that. We got to add that to the list. Okay. Uh, there was other. Yeah, we, we got some emulation news that we got to add to the list. Yeah. But first, before we get into any of that, uh, there's games for. Yes. Uh, the Nintendo Switch Online. Switch Online plus expansion pack. Let's hear because it. Because it's N64 games, everybody. And it's three good ones. So we knew about Jeff Force Gemini coming and coming soon. Mm-hmm. That's a big one. But in addition to Jet Force Gemini, we are getting Harvest Moon 64 and 1080 snowboarding. Now, it's it's available. You can play it right yes. now. Yes. Uh, I have not yet, but I have wanted to. Yes. Because these are, I mean, I can't speak to Harvest Moon. Because I'm not a nerd. I don't play nerd games. Um, <laughs> but Jet Force Gemini, good game. Uh, 1080 snowboarding, classic. Classic. Probably the best snowboarding game of all time, if I may be so bold. I need to play it again because I remember loving it a lot. But it is an N64 yeah. game. 
So yes, I'm not. But entirely it's a very sure simple well game. Hold up, it distilled snowboarding down to racing. I mean, you could do tricks in it, but it really just distilled it down to uh, racing, which I feel like is more uh, conducive of what most people do when they snowboard. They just go down the hill. They don't They're like very fast. You could do, do tricks and stuff. stuff. You could do tricks and stuff. Yeah, but it was kind of for style points. It was yeah. it was awesome. It was one of our yeah. favorite N sixty four games. Uh, but yeah. again, I haven't played it in so long. I want to give it another try, and this is the easiest way to play yeah. it on the Switch because mm-hmm. it's available. Yes. Um. So I've been waiting for that. This was on uh the first reel of Nintendo Switch Online N sixty four games. So it's been anticipated yeah. for a while. So now we have it. So go play it. Uh, and then that's it, I guess. Oh, and Jet Force Gemini, but we knew about that. Yeah. Uh, and that I also want to try again because I remember yeah. liking that a lot, but I can't imagine that holding up at all. Uh, I think I've said it on the show before. They added it on Rare Replay on Xbox One, and they had to patch in modern controls <laughs> because the original controls were so borked that you couldn't play without an N64 controller. Right. So. Um. All right. Well, the first topic is E3. We'll talk. Wait, is that the first topic? No, let's no, talk about the Game Awards. The, yeah, I was going to say. I don't know why that's there. We got to move that down a little bit. So, yes, the Game Awards happened. Uh, I did not watch it because I was busy taking my kids to a Christmas Wonderland thing uh, where we got to watch uh, Frozen in a drive-in me- theater style, and they got to walk around Christmas lights. Um, but I caught the recap afterwards. Um, quite the show. <laughs> I watched the whole thing. I was uh, a little bit yes. falling asleep. So, so it's the, long it's like it's like three and a half hours isn't it it's long and the problem is that just all of the trailers start to blur together they all try to be yeah. like you know epic like fantasy worlds and stuff and they all have the same sort of yeah. beats that they do so it all it all just blurs together and, and it's, it's just sensory overload and you start to lose sight of everything and mm-hmm. all you look out for is gameplay. And I mean, I got to say there was a decent amount of gameplay trailers in, in this or, or or trailers that had like a smidgen of, of yeah. gameplay. Um, it, I, I feel like cause I was trying to think like how could, there was a lot of announcements. And that's something yeah. we need to talk about as well, is that there's a million uh-huh. announcements versus the actual awards. Um I was thinking, like, how could, like, a studio show their game or announce their game in a way that would actually stand out against all of these other games? And it's just show the gameplay first. Because, like, they'll show, yeah. like, a cinematic, and it's like, okay, that's cool, but how do I know if I'm interested? This isn't what I'm going to be playing. This is just a cinematic. Yeah. There's, it's like they're showing you the world first, so they'll get you interested in the world and then show you what you'll be doing in that world. But I want to know what I'm doing before you show me the world right. anyway uh do we want to what do we want to do we want to talk about the winners why first? don't we start with the the winners first okay and then we'll do the announcements and then we'll do the the big talking point from the show okay yeah we got sam lake's big face yes <laughs> <laughs> um so game of the year not really a surprise baldur's gate 3 uh, congratulations to everyone at Larian Studios. I don't know you, but you made the game of the year. Uh, best game direction went to Alan Wake 2. Uh, best narrative, Alan Wake 2. And best art direction, Alan Wake 2. That's why you see Sam Lake's face over there. <laughs> uh, best score and music, Final Fantasy 16. Uh, best audio design, Hi-Fi Rush. Uh, best performance, Neil Newborn from Baldur's Gate. Uh, games for impact, uh, Tichi, uh, Tichia, still don't know what that category Chia. means. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Uh, best independent game, Sea of Stars, an actual independent game. Um, best debut indie game, Cocoon. Uh, best ongoing game, Cyberpunk 2077. That was I'm sure, one of the controversial I'm sure that was not ones. controversial. <laughs> One of the controversial ones that we talked about yes. on this show about how we well, I'm not yes. sure if we agree that that counts as an ongoing game. Yeah, because it's like 
that kind of makes all games ongoing games if yeah. you think about it because every game like gets support after launch and ever and like a lot of games are no longer the same game they were when they launched i think cyberpunk really became the poster child of that i mean but it, it didn't become the poster child of that for a good reason it, it was for a very bad reason yeah it's it I mean, it's it's there. Be, it's it's on best ongoing because they continued to support it for. They they put a lot of work into the support way after the game had launched, but yeah. it was because they failed so miraculously at launch, and before launch. So they had to make up yeah. for it, and and that uh, is that. I don't think that that's worthy of giving an award to. Yeah, especially because like. You know, these other games, Apex Legends, Final Fantasy XIV, Fortnite, Genshin Impact, like those are multiplayer games and those are, you know, going to be updated, you know, year after year after year. CD Projekt Red has said that we're done updating Cyberpunk after this. So yeah. it's no longer ongoing. It's done. Yeah, that's true. Uh, uh, we've yeah. talked about this already, but to me, an ongoing game is a game like like an online game that's constantly changing and evolving, like yeah. all of the other yeah. games in the list. So, like, if you're gonna put something like Cyberpunk on there, it should be a that's a different category. It sounds like best, yeah, redemption or best turnaround or best, most improved, most improved. Yeah, yeah. Or maybe that's community support. See, I thought community support, which went to Baldur's Gate 3, by the way, uh, I thought community support was always just like, you know, the way you interact with your community, mm -hmm. you know, the way you provide updates to the community, the way yeah. you uh, foster the community yeah. um, in a positive way, which I guess Cyberpunk and single player games in general could also have good community support. Um. But yeah, that's also like more geared towards online multiplayer games. Right. Uh all right. Well, anyway, what else do we got? Oh, best community sport, Boulders Gate. Uh um, best mobile game, best mobile game, Honkai Star Rail, best AR VR game, Resident Evil Village, uh best action game, Armored Core 6. That game is very good. Uh, is it? It's very good. Uh it's a little crazy that it's best action game, but right uh it's it's, uh, it's very it's very good best action adventure game uh tears of the kingdom which i that think was the only category it won yeah it kind of got washed uh yeah action adventure game best action adventure game usually goes to the runner-up <laughs> it's usually like that's <laughs> the runner-up category because it's such a broad well, category see i was thinking that best direction went to the runner up because that went to Alan Wake too. Oh, that too. That that yeah. that. Too. I think Alan Wake might have won more awards this year than anyone else. They won a lot of awards. Yeah. So that to me signifies that that's number 2. Yeah. That 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 one yeah, that that one came out from from behind. Yeah. Uh Anyway, best role playing game uh, Baldur's Gate, which of Baldur's course Baldur's Gate 3 uh, best fighting game, Street Fighter Six. Not really surprised by that. Every, best family everything game. else in the category was horrible for best fighting game. <laughs> well, Mortal Kombat was, I've heard, was good. Okay, true. but I, I don't think Mortal Kombat One was as much of a big improvement over Mortal Kombat Eleven as Street Fighter Six was over Five. Right. Um, best family game, uh, Super Mario Wonder. Best sim slash strategy, Pikmin Four. Best sports slash racing game, Forza Motorsport. Now, I read an interesting article about this category in particular. Okay. Uh, from IGN about how when you combine the sports and racing genres into one category, you're doing a disservice to both genres because not every racing game is necessarily a sports game. Mm -hmm. And the racing genre itself is so wide and varied that to lump it in with the sport genre does it a disservice and it does a disservice to the sports genre because now sports have to compete with racing and 
in like the 10 years that the game awards have been um have been around racing games have won this category eight times and the only two times they didn't win was for tony hawk one one year and i forgot the other game but it was another game involving wheels <laughs> so it's like traditional sports games can't win this this should just be the best racing category and sports should be its own category so yeah that makes sense so if that were the case uh if this was sports would they not put f1 in it i get that they would put that as a racing game then okay i mean it is a sport it is yeah no like s- racing is a sport but racing as a genre like incorporate en- encompasses so much rocket league was the other game like that's a sports game with cars that you race around a track so does so, that that's a sports game rocket league? yeah rocket league to me that's hard for me to define as a sports game what would you define it as it's not a platformer what is that what is rocket a, league it's hard it's hard for me to say it's a sports game because to me sports well, games are like almost simulation it's a no cuz you have games like you know NFL blitz which is football but it's not sim football it's you know arcade football or mutant league football which is not realistic in the slightest multiplayer game <laughs> esport game versus game it's an arena game people are saying in the, yeah. in, the in the chat but i don't i i mean i don't know I don't know. It's a weird category for me, sports stuff. I don't even yeah. like half the shit in there anyway. Half I know. Like, the... you, you think sports, you think of like Madden or NBA 2K or, you know, EA Sports, NHL. Mm-hmm. Um, but I do think it is a good point to bring up that racing and sports, you really like those should be separate things. Like, yeah. you don't have to combine them. Okay. You shouldn't combine them. So we also have best multiplayer game, which went to Baldur's Gate, which Baldur's uh, Gate. I I mean, it's an amazing game and it has amazing multiplayer, but right. I wasn't considering Baldur's Gate because I was like, well, this game wasn't built for like for multiplayer. The multiplayer is just like part of the game, but apparently it's. Very I good, mean, the multiplayer. <laughs> the whole reason why it took so long to get on Xbox is because it wasn't the the Series S couldn't support yeah. split screen. Multiplayer. And and everyone I know who's playing it is playing it with a crew of people. So uh, yeah, I'm sure the multiplayer is 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 great. Yeah. Um, innovation and accessibility. Uh, Forza Motorsport. Forza I'm Motorsport. Sh- I'm sure that has good accessibility. I don't know what yeah. any of the game's accessibility options are. Well, I'm surprised because everybody's talking about the Street Fighter Six accessibility. Uh, and then out of nowhere here comes Forza. <laughs> yeah, true. Uh, best uh, adaptation: The Last of Us. I don't see any of these other people winning that because The Last did, of Us. Did you see the picture of The Last of Us, like the crew winning this award, and Anthony Mackie, who's in Twisted Metal, just standing there, stone faced, in front of them? No, I didn't see that. <laughs> it's very funny. <laughs> I did it's see though. Uh, I saw a TikTok talking about. Did mm-hmm. you see Anthony Mackie? Uh, he was he. He came out to give an award, I think. Um, yes. And it was a little awkward. He like uh, was like reacting to the crowd. Like they were mm-hmm. yelling things at him and he was yelling things back at them. But it kind of like uh, interrupted a lot of what he was saying. Yeah. So it was like an awkward sort of exchange. Um, okay. But the TikTok I was watching was like, uh, Anthony Mackie is getting a lot of crap, but people aren't understanding that if you were in the room, you would hear just how loud the crowd was and how rude they were to him and interrupting everything that he was saying. And he handled it very well. It's just you yeah. only heard his mic, not the crowd like like shouting, right. like heckling him, basically. Um, yeah. So, yeah, that was just like a weird moment that I think didn't translate well uh, to us watching from home. Okay. Anyway, he presented for best ongoing game. Oh, so he gave the Cyberpunk Award. Yeah. 
Yes. Uh, most anticipated game, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. Uh, and player's choice went to Baldur's Gate 3. Yeah, of course. And then we got all the other And then next the is all the stuff. esports and content creator stuff that... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And Iron Mouse won content creator of the year. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, I mean, it's... Everything seems to be... Uh, everything seems to be normal. I mean, Baldur's Gate uh, won most of the stuff. Uh, Alan Wake yeah. won a Baldur's bunch of Gate, stuff. Baldur's Gate won three. Uh, sorry, Baldur's Gate won six awards. Alan Wake won three, and Forza won two. Oh wow! Uh, Hi-Fi yeah. Rush won best audio design, so that that that's good. We we had some mm-hmm. some games come out from from nowhere. Uh, mm-hmm. Like Armored Core and, and, and Street Fighter Six and and stuff like that. Um, yeah, I'm surprised Spider Man didn't win anything because that seemed like a game that was ripe for a game award and that didn't win a single thing. Uh, I'm not honestly like I get nominating it. It's a very good game. It's a very high quality game, but I don't. I can't think of anything that it does that is substantially different like that's the next leap in spider-man gameplay evolution over the first game yeah you know i think no i I agree web wings but even that like (laughs) does it really like change the game yeah yeah there's a lot of other games that had much greater innovations this year yeah uh okay but uh that was the boring part of the game awards the part that nobody cares about (laughs) because they just Uh, half of those awards more than half of those awards they just threw out they didn't even like present them they just threw them out yeah yeah uh the 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 other part is the uh announcements yes all the announcements so many announcements uh capcom announces monster hunter wild coming in 2025 uh launching on pc ps5 series x and s so i have played the last few monster hunter games i gotta not play this because i keep thinking that i like monster hunter and then i don't so (laughs) okay uh well maybe you'll like the next game it is kojima's xbox project titled od uh starring sophia lillis uh hunter schaefer and otto creer um no release date yet, but he is uh, working on this project in conjunction with Jordan Peele. Uh, yeah, this is very exciting. I'm surprised they didn't show any Death Stranding 2 stuff, because that's something that they're working on. Uh, I'm surprised yes. they're work- he's working on two games in tandem. Um, yeah. But this looks awesome. We didn't really get much. We just got like a teaser. Um, yeah, we just got, we literally got talking heads. Um, and- but it, it looks like it's going to be a horror game yeah. and maybe this will show us what he wanted to do with silent Hills in a, in a roundabout way. And he's finally got the collab with the big Hollywood guy. He's got Jordan Peele along for the ride. Yes. Yes. His real best friend. Yes. And he did that thing where he says that it's not a normal game. It's a unique experience, a (laughs) genre that doesn't exist. So, right. So it'll be a third person shooter. <laughs> <laughs> I I I am excited for this. Uh it's going to be different and weird than, you know, normal games, but I'm sure it'll have some traditional stuff in it just like Death Stranding did. Right. So it's okay. Uh, it's exciting and I think it was worth uh at least 5 minutes. Yeah. Yeah, five minutes is plenty. (laughs) Um, Next is um, free God of War Ragnarok DLC out uh, today. That was a huge Uh, deal. This is this is one of the biggest announcements. Uh, Titled Valhalla, it takes elements of the roguelike genre and infuses it with God of War combat. So apparently there was like a mode in the original game. god of war what 2018 god of war that had yeah. like a, like a, it was like a post game thing that did like a like a rogue like situation and this is just yeah. that but this was a surprise to everybody nobody knew they were working yes. on this or that they were making this yeah and it's free which is good yeah gives people uh, a reason ne- to play that game again yes uh next up 
quite the shock. Marvel's Blade is in development at Arcane Studios. This a mature looks single awesome. player third person game set in the heart of Paris. This looks awesome. Now, the teaser was awesome. Yes. Uh yes. it is Arcane Studios. So Yes, they are they're great studio. Uh I am currently playing Deathloop on my Steam Deck right now. I'm very proud of myself because I redeemed the Amazon uh Prime uh Deathloop. You know, you can do redeem it throughout Amazon Prime. Um, but it goes to your Epic account, which apparently oh. I have one. So I figured out how to launch the Epic Game Store from Steam Big, Big Picture mode <laughs> to oh. get into Death uh, Death Loop, and it runs fairly well. <laughs> like I no, didn't know like you it only crashed that. on me once. Yeah, that's awesome. I didn't know yeah, Epic I, Games I, Store runs on Linux. You have to install a special proton program okay and then you have to like do some finagling to get it to boot properly okay so but yeah it works fairly well but anyway um enough about me being a hardcore pc gamer <laughs> marvel's blade so arcane is owned by bethesda which is owned by microsoft they have not confirmed whether or not this is an xbox exclusive I'm willing to bet that it is. Also, I let, let's say Arcane also famously just made Redfall. <laughs> so let's yes. not say that all their games are great. Well, all their single player games are good. <laughs> right. Um, I see. I was willing to agree with you that it would be exclusive last year. Hmm. This year, given all the stuff that's going on with trying to buy Activision, the the reveals through all the court cases that a lot of Bethesda games were going to be multi-platform until Xbox said no, um, leads me to believe that this might leave the door open for it going to PlayStation. I think that they purposely didn't announce what platform it is because they weren't sure if this announcement was going to be a part of their dealings, their their uh, their FTC issues. Like, right? I think that if they end up being clean on all the FTC stuff, they might just be like, all right, fuck it, this thing's exclusive now. Because <laughs> once yeah. the court case is over, they can kind of do whatever they want. True. Uh, and, but if is, that is the case, where it's going to be Xbox exclusive, then that means Microsoft literally looked at Spider-Man and Wolverine and mm -hmm. said, we want our own Marvel exclusive video game, and we're going to have Blackjack. And hookers in it yeah. and they got the most r-rated marvel hero outside of the punisher that they could get this this it, it was just a small little teaser but it but it looks yeah awesome. uh I'm, I'm very interested in this uh yeah. i hope it's not exclusive but i hope it's on game pass and i hope it's fucking day I'm one sure, on i'm sure i'm sure it will be i'll sure it will be on game pass uh anyway sega announced five games <laughs> Oh, I'm excited for this because it is uh, Shinobi, Golden Axe, Streets of Rage, Crazy Taxi, and Jet Set Radio. I got to be quiet because my kids are asleep. <laughs> so, and they're all redone. They're all completely redone. Completely yeah, these are brand redone. new entries in uh, these long running series. Um they showed a lot of Jet Set Radio, which I think they did because they're trying to get back at Bomb Rush Cyberfunk. Yeah, that doesn't look as good as Bomb Rush Cyberfunk. I gotta say, I know. I think that um, uh, it it looks a little more generic than Bomb Rush Cyberfunk. So, but that one yeah. has style. Bomb Rush has style. This one just looks like uh, I don't know. It looks like an AI just made a modern version of of uh, Jet Set Radio. Yeah. But, uh, Everything else, like Crazy Taxi, I was thinking, like, how could they make a modern version of Crazy Taxi? It's just, it's a very simple arcade game where you just yeah. pick people up and take them somewhere. But this seems like it has some sort of racing element. Yeah, a racing element. It has, like, a the police in it. So there might be some sort of, like, cops and robbers aspect to it. Um, multiplayer, even. Like, mm -hmm. I feel like maybe they found a way to expand on Crazy Taxi in a way that, you know, that goes beyond the simple pick people up and drop them off to the offspring. Yeah. So I love Shinobi. 
I'm glad we're mm-hmm. revisiting that. But they tried to do that once before. Uh, they they tried to do that several times before. They did one on the 3DS that was not yes. good. Uh, so right. I'm a little skeptical of how this new Shinobi might turn out. I do think it has a cool art style. And I mm-hmm. think keeping it 2D might be the best course of action. Right. Because I don't know if Shinobi is a franchise that can easily translate to 3D. That being said, Golden Axe and Streets of Rage are getting full 3D uh, reimaginings. Yeah, that's completely different. That's a completely different game. Yeah. So that'll be interesting to see. So, I mean, I'm I'm stoked for all this. That This looks awesome. Mm -hmm. It's just something Sega should have done a long time ago. Yes. I think the success of the Yakuza games or like a dragon games, Mm -hmm. uh, the persona games, which is technically Atlas. uh, And even like Sonic frontiers is like giving Sega the confidence and the money to go back into their library and not just, you know, fart out a port of a dreamcast game, but actually give us a new version of the dreamcast game. Right. All right. Next is embark. Uh, this looked like a generic game that, uh, Oh, this is the finals. Oh, embark the finals. The... Yeah. I'm, embark I'm thinking is of something company. completely different. Uh, the yeah. finals I've been wanting to give a try to it's, uh, not really a battle. It's like kind of a battle Royale, but it's objective based. Um, it is. I... Uh, yeah, it's, um, it dropped the day of the game awards. It was just they announced it like it's available now. This is that uh, game that creative... had AI uh, uh, voice of uh, uh, yes. announcers. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Embark is the studio created by former Battlefield developers. Uh, the finals is a game show shooter where players compete for fame, money, and sponsorships. So I, I've wanted to try this, but I still haven't tried it yet. I think it's free, <laughs> so there's really yeah. no excuse for me not to give it a try. Mm-hmm. Anyway, No Man's Sky developer making a new game. You got freaking yes. Sean Murray coming out there, making <laughs> all these promises once again. Yeah, uh, it's called Light No Fire. It looks to be a very ambitious open world online multiplayer game. Um, what did he say? I think he said like it's the first like real open world, and I'm like, and it's like you can't be saying stuff like that. You of all people. <laughs> Yeah, he uh, he made a lot of promises that it's hard. To, I mean, he hasn't shown his face in public in a really long time. And then he comes out here and he right. does basically the exact same thing he did with No Man's Sky. Um, yeah. But the premise behind this game is instead of going to different planets, there is one world and the whole world is procedurally generated. Uh, and yes. it's multiplayer, so you have all of your friends on your... Maybe they can visit your world. Now, I'm sure there's multiple worlds you can visit. It's unclear how many people can play on one world. Uh, it looked like they were showcasing throughout the trailer four people most of the time, but there were some clips where you could see a lot more than four people, but it's unclear if they were NPCs or real people. Um, mm-hmm. I, I looked into this a, a pretty decent amount because I was interested. I'm interested because... Again, Sean Murray's saying a lot of stuff, and it's like, how much can we yeah. believe ab- about this game? Yeah. So he calls it the first real open world. So we'll see just how open that game is. Yeah. So uh, I, I, uh, I, I mean, I'm sure it'll be fine. No Man's Sky ended up being great. Uh, like th- they updated yeah. it a lot, and now a lot of the promises they had in the beginning, they ended up keeping. But at first, uh, they it, it it didn't launch in a great state. Um, again, another question is, what are you going to do in this game? It sounds like you're just going to be exploring a lot, which mm-hmm. is fine. That's just the type of game that it is, I guess. Anyway, uh, Final Fantasy DL- uh, 16 DLC. Echoes of the Fallen and Rising Tide DLC. Um, Echoes of the Fallen is out now with a new story chapter is taking place just before the final battle. And the Rising Tide is coming spring 2024. Is this free DLC? I heard it was free, but I. Ooh, that would be nice. I don't know if it is because I feel like they would have said no. There's an expansion pass, so that can't be true. It can't be free if there's an expansion pass. If it's pass, that means you got to pay money. 25 bucks. Yeah, it's 25 bucks. That's not free at all. Um, Rise of the Ronin. This looked cool. Uh, This is um, Team Ninja's upcoming open world samurai game coming march 22nd 2024 
This looked cool. How cool would it be to have a samurai game where you just shoot people? <laughs> you just bring a gun. I mean, if my recollection of samurai cinema has taught me anything, like a gun is like a very big deal. Like you can't mm -hmm. just like you don't just get a gun. It's very symbolic of like Western influence and uh, last resort and power that like you, you really don't understand. Um, so like they're not going to put a gun in this game unless it like has significant meaning. No, that's the thing that that's the whole yeah. point of the game is that there's it looks like the guns are not overpowered, though. It looks like it's just a right. weapon that like doesn't do much damage. Um, OK, but I'm interested. It looks pretty cool. Right. uh next is skull and bones <laughs> remember, february remember 16th february 16th 2024 they they gave it a date that is the day it is coming out so sure jan whatever I'll, you say i'll believe it when i see it yeah uh next was lost records bloom and rage i don't even remember oh it's life is strange uh yeah don't nod the creators of life is strange and developer of junset Twin Mirrors and Tell Me Why uh, revealed the first look at their upcoming new universe coming to PC, Xbox, and PS5. The story focused on friends who reunite after two decades. Oh, that sounds nice. Uh, Dragon Ball Spark Zero. Everybody went nuts for that. Uh, uh, Fortnite Rocket Racing. Fortnite Cross Rocket League, which is apparently in yeah. Fortnite. Yeah, they added like a Fortnite mode, uh, Rocket League mode to Fortnite because doesn't Epic own psionics now oh that makes sense yeah uh ori developer moon studios reveals no rest for the wicked i don't even remember that uh it is a as it, it is a diablo like arpg showed off uh gorgeous world with plenty of creatures to fight and treasure to find uh coming to pc via early access q1 2024 full release later the year uh for pc xbox and playstation 5 that explains why i didn't re know about it because i probably tuned it out uh right. bioware veterans reveal new rpg exodus uh, this is exodus. the one this is the one yeah. that i thought was uh what's the, the finals the embark okay i just got the e's mixed yeah. up uh yeah exodus this looked so generic but it's bioware <laughs> developers so i guess we have to pay attention right i mean it might be the good bioware developers who made all the games people actually like mm -hmm. Uh, next was Big Walk, which is by the Untitled uh, the Goose next Game, guys. Game, yes, uh, House House is their studio name. Trailer showed the game's super strange atmosphere with a spherical protagonist coming out in 2025. That looked cool. Uh, Kemuri, which is the first game from Ikumi Nakamura. Her, remember yes. her? She, yeah. she showed off Ghostwire Tokyo, and everyone was like, oh my god, she's so cute. And, and then, then she, she quit Tango Gameworks. To work on this, a bright, colorful, gorgeous action game. She got viral off of that and was like, I can do my own thing. And yeah, started working on this. It this looks is cool. her own thing. <laughs> this is her own thing. It looks cool. There's, there was zero gameplay in this. I have no idea what this yeah. game is. So uh, I guess I'll wait to see if I'm interested. Yeah. Uh, uh, next is Dead by Daylight spinoff. Uh, the casting of Frank Stone, a story-based game set in the Dead by Daylight universe. Interesting. Jurassic Park Survival, uh, which uh, had like two seconds of gameplay. It looked like a first person situation, yeah. but uh, for the most yeah. part, it was just um, cinematic. It's apparently um, it's a revival of a canceled uh, Jurassic Park game from the early 2000s. Oh, that's cool. So I don't know if it's going to like according to this. We don't know if it's a proper revival or if they're just using the name. Mm hmm. Um, but that's what that's what the article says. I've seen a lot of people compare this to the old Jurassic Park game Trespasser, which I don't is that at all. Uh, look it up. It is famous for being one of the worst games ever released. It is notoriously janky, notoriously buggy, um, not optimized very well at all uh, for PC, um, and has just very odd gameplay mechanics that try to like you know invoke realism but ultimately just make it feel terrible it just looks like Turok. Um, like a shitty Turok, yeah what's with the boobs oh that was the part of the immersion you don't have a hud 
So you had a tattoo on your boobs and that represented your health meter. Oh, cool. <laughs> Very cool. Yeah. All right. So, well, I hope it's maybe not this like will that. be the good trespasser. Uh, Visions of Mana from Square Enix, ne the next entry in the Mana series, coming to PS4, PS5, Xbox, and PC. We got another Mana game. That's cool. People who like yes. Mana, not us here. Yes. Hellblade nope. Senua's uh, Saga. Uh, I'm surprised this isn't out yet. This was announced like forever ago. Yeah, coming sometime in 2024. Um, still haven't played the first one. I want to play the first one. I've heard it's very good. And this think, this one looks incredible. I'm honestly. sure it's on Game Pass. Yeah. Um, Jose Ferris is... Uh, Ho Jose Joseph. F Joseph. Joseph. Brothers A Tale of Two Sons is getting a remake. Uh, that's the game yes. where you can play it with... Well, each character is on a different analog stick. But Correct. That, I don't know if that's going to work in this one. Uh, well, I mean, that was the whole gameplay gimmick of the first game apparently so. you could play it with just multiplayer which is okay potentially how this is going to work because i mean yeah you look at like a way out and and the other one <laughs> it takes two oh, like it yeah. looks like that's kind of the way that they're going so maybe they're going to make a this into something like that right uh former payday developer reveals den of wolves uh-oh do i have to sue uh oh Yes, we should. Uh, Ten Chambers brought Den of Wolves to the Game Awards, which the Swedish developer described as a techno thriller competitive heist game. We're, we're plowing through these. There's way too many of these to, to go through. Yeah, I know. Single one. Uh, uh, Black Myth Wukong has a release date. Cool. Tales August of, 20th next year. Tales of Kenzura Zhao. Uh, this actually looks pretty cool. It looks like the new Prince of Persia that's coming out. It looks kind of yes. exactly like it. Mm-hmm. Uh, then we have Palia. I don't re even remember that. Uh, uh, cozy MMO coming to Switch uh, later this week. Uh, Outlast, Outlast Trials, Trials is this... coming uh, coming to console. Th this one had that uh, trailer that was all like Twitch streamers and it looked fun. Yeah. Uh, Rise of the Golden Idol. Uh, the follow-up game to the case of the Golden Idol coming to all consoles. As Dusk Falls coming to PS4 and PS5 next year. The Last Sentinel. Uh, Narrative-focused narrative open world game. Uh, Zen Zone Zero coming next year to PC and Mac. All right, I'm, I'm skipping. Uh, Warhammer, I'm, I'm skipping through Warhammer this. 40K, Space Marine gets a release date. Uh, the First Descent. Dead Cell uh, Studio Manager. Motion Twin reveals Windblown. That's the only other okay. one that I care about. Uh, the people who made Dead Cells are making a new game. It seems like a third person, or not third person, like a top-down situation that has some yeah. sort of multiplayer element. That looks really cool. Uh, that was one of the first uh, games that, that was shown off. We're getting World of Goo 2. Uh, wow. Anticipate a follow-up to the 2008 puzzle game. Hey, World of Goo was very good. It was like one of the big killer apps for the Wii WiiWare download service. And a launch title for the Switch. Yeah. Uh, that's it. Everything else uh, looks stupid. <laughs> yeah, everything else was uh, just stuff. There's a lot of stuff. There's a lot of stuff. It's too much stuff. Some would say mm -hmm. too much stuff. Uh, some would say too much stuff, and they did. Uh, like, uh, yes. we have a whole Bloomberg article here. Biggest video game awards ceremony is heavy on promotion, light on awards. A lot of people were very upset mm -hmm. about how they, some tweets went viral about how uh, they were only giving award recipients 30 seconds to give their thanks, and then they were being ushered off. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, Kojima got six minutes to talk to Jordan yes, Peele and say how much it. he likes Jordan Peele. Yeah. Uh yeah, there was that. It was a lot of a lot of uh trailers. Um the awards that they did announce, it was just Jeff Keeley staring into the teleprompter and reading them. Um, yeah, that they, they, he like rapid fired through a lot of them. Yeah. I know there was criticism of the celebrity guests that were there, like Matthew McConaughey and Timothy mm -hmm. Chalamet. 
Um, which, in fairness, McConaughey was in one of the games that was being announced. I don't remember which one. Yeah. Um, and Anthony Mackie is in Twisted Metal. So. Yeah, and Timothy Chalamet used to mod Xbox controllers, so he has game cred. <laughs> Timothy Chalamet seemed the least interested in being there. Maybe he was right. actually offended that he was presented as his YouTube username. <laughs> Maybe. Um. Um. All right, are you going to read the article, or do you, do you want to just talk about it? Do you want me to? Do you want me to skip to? Like when they talk about all the, you know, the problem with it or. Yeah. What's the problem with it? Okay. Let's see here. Baldur's Gate 3 took home the top prize at this year's uh, biggest video game award ceremony. Uh, although there wasn't much time to celebrate like the rest of the award winners, director Sven Vinke, uh was given just 30 seconds to speak. The shortened timer appeared to be a direct response to last year's show in which God of War actor Christopher Judge delivered a rambling eight minute speech that stretched out the entire ceremony. But the limit this year uh, led to some awkward moments as speakers such as Sam Lake, the director of Alan Wake 2, which won Best Narrative, was hurried off the stage before they could even start thanking their coworkers. In contrast to other major annual awards ceremonies, the Game Awards is largely consumed with announcements for future video games. This year showed uh, featured 31 awards, but many of them, including Best RPG and Best Multiplayer, were quickly rattled off by host Jeff Keighley rather than presented to the winners. The bulk of the three-hour runtime was filled with what Keeley calls world premieres. Uh, new game announcements such as the year's big reveals of Monster Hunter Wilds and a game based on Marvel's Blade comics. Um, it's these announcements that typically con uh, convince tens of millions of viewers to tune in to the live stream of the event in the hopes of seeing exciting new entries in their favorite series. Striking a balance between celebrating current games and teasing new ones is always difficult, but after this year's show, many observers were asking if the Game Awards uh, were really still all about the Game Awards. Yeah. A teleprompter in front of the stage uh, counted down from 30 seconds before asking the award winners to please wrap it up. Significantly less time than given to, to the developers who appeared on stage to tease future games. Hollywood actors like Matthew McConaughey and Anthony Mackie uh, took the stage to announce their own projects and spoke for significantly longer periods of time than any of the other game developers who were uh, there to be honored. Gonzo of the Muppets <laughs> also received a significant amount of stage time as part of a skit. I'm going to pause for a second and just say, do not come for Gonzo. Do not come for the Muppets. They don't do anything wrong. Uh, they can I'll, host the whole game awards for all I care. I'll say love a good Muppet time. Love it when they yes. bring out the Muppets. Yes. Gonzo didn't do a good job. Pepe <laughs> the Prawn did a great job <laughs> last year. But Gonzo honestly, kind of fell short this year. Honestly, they should just have Pepe the Prawn host the game awards yeah, every year. For real. He's the best. So that's basically um, it. There's another part in the article that says the most egregious moment was a six-minute segment featuring game director Hideo Kojima and film director Jordan Peele, who exchanged extensive compliments for one for one another and offered lengthy, vague teases for an upcoming collaboration that may still be years away. So it's a six-minute segment. Mm -hmm. um, I will say that I, I mean, I mostly agree that. Uh, I don't like how they just uh, riddle off a lot of the 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 uh, the awards. They just riddle them off and don't even give people time to accept it, and they don't make yeah. a big deal about it because a lot of those are the smaller awards that need to, you know, be those people need their game shown off and stuff. Um, yes. So it's disappointing that they don't get a chance to like accept it. However. I'll say I'd rather hear this is a very controversial opinion, but I'd rather hear Kojima and Jordan Peele talk to each other for six minutes than hear somebody thank their grandma for 30 seconds. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. But by the same token, like the whole point of your show is to celebrate and honor the games that were made. Yeah. In, tw in the year of uh, that you know uh, in the particular year so 2023 it's it's not really about hyping up and propping up games that are coming out 
for the next year, two years, three years. Yeah. Um, and it's not about, you know, letting celebrity guests go on about whatever they want. It's about celebrating the hard work and dedication people put in to their craft this year. And I think this year in particular, where we've had studio closures and layoffs left and right, like one every other week for Jeff Keeley, who's supposed to be like, you know, Mr. Video Games to not be the figurehead of the game celebration and just be like basically a pr promotional arm for the games industry. Like that's a bad look. And this is something that he's had to fight since the game awards started. You know, he's always been criticized for, well, the show has always been criticized for just being a promotional arm for the games industry rather than a celebration of, you know, the work that goes into making these games. And I, Unfortunately, this year proved that right. So Metascension says the real game awards are the Dice Awards anyway. And I did see uh, Greg Miller talk about this because he like hosts them like a bunch of yeah. times the last couple of years, I think. Uh, the Dice Awards is an award show put on by the games industry. And they all they do is award games they don't make announcements or anything they just it's just right this is the award come get the <laughs> award and that's the whole mm -hmm. award show so if you want more of that go watch the dice awards the 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 game awards is like the super bowl of video games where it's just gonna be half of it's gonna be commercials but it doesn't have to be that way you can have your promotions and you can honor and award people who like work on video games for the year. I think the problem is recently the one has taken precedent over the other. Yeah. And, you know, the show is not called, you know, winter games fest. It's called the game awards. So you expect people to be given awards and celebrated for the work that they've done for the year. I think to make it better, they don't rapid fire so many awards. They got to give them uh, mm -hmm. maybe cut down on some of the announcements, but also the announcements have to be interesting. They can't just be cinematic trailers that all blur together. They got to be different. And that's something that yeah. uh, they have to like convey to the developers. Like if you want to showcase your game, it's going to just f fade into the background with all of the other games because nobody's doing anything unique and different yeah um and another reason why kojima's thing went on for so long is because half of it was in japanese <laughs> you had to sit through him talking in japanese and then it getting translated again that did go okay. a little long that should have been about half the the time that and it yet was. sam lake whose first language native language is not english was not given any time to like get his point across. You know, yeah. he had to deliver an acceptance speech in a language that's not his native tongue. And he was not given the proper time to like, you know, get his thoughts together and say what he has to say. Also, we bring up how the God of War guy, uh, Christopher Judge, uh, gave a rambling yeah. eight minute speech last year. They opened the show with him this year and he mm -hmm. made jokes about his rambling eight minute speech. And ended up rambling. <laughs> he was there for way too long again. <laughs> yeah. So, I th there there's no there's no structure. But again, it is an award show, and they're always a shit show. So it's it's hard also, to. What? It's an online award show. Like it's not being broadcast on television, mm -hmm. so it doesn't need to fit into like a specific time slot, mm -hmm. and it doesn't have to worry about traditional ad breaks like a tv show does so length shouldn't really be a problem yeah three hours may be a little long for an award show and for most people's attention spans but you could do the game award like the awards portion of the game awards you can do that in 90 minutes no problem and you can dedicate another half an hour to all the reveals and that's 
a good size for an award show. So yeah. I don't see – and if it, if it runs over, it runs over. No problem. Nobody gets upset. You know, for a three-hour show to not have enough time for developers to, you know, give thanks, accept their award, celebrate what they did, you know, it it's – it sucks. It sucks. I mean, just know? don't pack so much shit into it. You know it's going to run right. over. You know it's going to go a couple minutes over. Just cut some of the shit out. It's yeah. it's impossible to have it run on time. You just 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 give yourself a little buffer. And if it's sh- if it runs short, that's fine. It's an like you said, it's an online show. Who cares? Yeah. Um. I mean, the only positive I could take from this is that, you know, Jeff is aware of the feedback and he did bring up that like the the teleprompter telling people to wrap it up like that was a error on their part and that they will be addressing that next year so my only hope is that they see all of this and that for next year's show they do a better job it's less focused on i understand you need the the reveals because you need the sponsorship from the game companies to even get this off the ground but you know, I'm sure there, there's got to be somebody over there saying, like, we need to scale this back. Yeah, he's extremely receptive to criticism. He's He's been implementing that. Uh, I mean, last again, last year, th- these changes were made because of the eight minute rambling speech from last year. So, uh, yeah. yeah, he's constantly iterating on it. Uh, but that'll probably bring more problems next year. Um, yeah. Anyway, uh, I, I will say, like, I... I saw, and I'll wrap this up. Uh, what, what's their name? It's the Burback Brothers. This is a while ago. They did a video on the Spike TV Game Awards, oh, which were the pre- uh, predecessor to this. Mm-hmm. And look, the first Spike TV Video Game Awards announced Game of the Year at the top of the show, and it was Madden. <laughs> <laughs> so, and then it was just like, you know, like three hours of uh, hot girls dancing and jokes about nerds playing video games in the basement. Is that the Joel um, McHale one? No, that was the last uh, Spike Video Game Awards. That was a disaster. Um, yeah. So, look, it's it's better than it has been. So yeah. we should be all we should be lucky. We live in this universe and not the one where the Spike Video Game Awards kept going. Yeah. But that said there's still a long road ahead of us to making like a respectable video game award show. Yeah. Uh, where are we? We got uh, professor clockwork with the 10 months. Yo, wolf bros love the content as always. I changed my, Oh, I read that already. Summer game ranks for hundred bits, 1995 poppy with a hundred bits. Hello fellas. Uh, this burners benners. Thank you for the prime. Uh, Lewin Mag, thanks for the 16 months. Hi, Wolf Bros. Coming back after a long absence in Twitch. Just to give you my prime sub. Love your podcast. Thanks, man. Thank and you. And Dark Type, thanks for the 32 months. Okay. Uh, we can now talk about... Uh, I guess we should just briefly mention uh, Kojima's documentary. Yes, he's getting a documentary. Uh, Hideo Kojima, Connecting Worlds being distributed exclusively by Disney Plus. <clears throat> it premiered at the Tribeca Film Festival this summer and will launch globally in the spring of 2024. How come I it didn't know about pi- this? I don't know. How come I didn't know about it? <clears throat> How come I didn't know it was coming to Disney of all streaming yeah, services? Yeah, of, of all places. And it was at the Tribeca Film Festival. I feel like we sh- should have known about that. Yeah. Well, oh, I didn't even know there's a trailer. Yeah, I want to see this. Is, yeah. is it is it out yet? When is it coming out? No, uh, next year. Oh, well, that's lame. Uh, I got to watch this trailer. I'll, I'll see, put in another tab. Oh, it's going to play. Oh, the yeah. audio. Oh, no. Oh, God, stop. Okay. <laughs> uh, all right. So I'll, I'll, I'll look at that. Uh, let's go talk about E3. Yes. E3 is dead. <laughs> For real this time. <laughs> Will's about to And I might be too. Die too. So we uh, talk about this all the time, yeah. how E3 is dying. But uh, this time, for real, baby, they're not coming back. This is the end of E3. Congratulations. We did it, everybody. The Entertainment Software Association has announced that its long-running 
Electronic Entertainment Expo E3 is officially dead. Uh, the last in-person event was in 2019. We were there uh, before the COVID pandemic and other complications prevented it from coming back uh, in its full form. Despite struggles, the ESA attempted to bring bring it back in various ways. Um, however, didn't work. <laughs> mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, so it's time to say goodbye, as they say. Thanks for the memories. Yeah. See you later, Rip Bozo. Um, rife with uh issues <coughs> since their last mm-hmm. uh uh E3 in 2019. I mean, they had the pandemic, yeah. but then also just nobody wanted to work with E3 again because they realized we could just do this on our own. Uh, there was no mm-hmm. reason to have E3 anymore if you got companies like Xbox and Nintendo and PlayStation doing their own thing. Why would they pay to be at E3 when they can just showcase their stuff themselves? It was kind of a, a, a what would you call it? Like a like a weird sort of pyramid scheme. Like a like a like a the ESA <laughs> was like kind of uh, just sucking money out of the games industry just to have like a place for them to announce their stuff. But the internet exists. And you don't need to have media people go to an event to try the new games when you could just give the people the games to try themselves. I mean, the the big thing was the uh, E3 was the ESA's like biggest fundraiser. Like that's where they made the majority of their money for the year. Mm-hmm. So really, it, it was a selfish act. They wanted to keep it going because that's where their money was coming from. Yeah. Now they just have to rely on other means with whatever that is i don't yeah, know but what good are they to the game to to the game companies if, if they're not so, a vessel for announcements the the whole point of the esa is they are the lobbying firm for the video games industry right so when like years ago when they were trying to restrict the sale of m-rated video games across the country the ESA was the one who they were the collection of video game companies who went to Washington and basically said video games should be protected under the first amendment, like all other forms of art. And they have time and again been champions of video games in terms of first amendment protection. They created the ESRB and because of the ESRB were able to have video games at all. Because in the 90s, they were ready to ban them because of Mortal Kombat and Night Trap. Well, that's all well and good. Where the fuck are they now? Where's the... <laughs> they should be out right now because doing something with the Apple storefront and the, and the Google storefront. They should be lobbying against that shit. Yeah. But... They should be That's lobbying for the right to repair. They should be lobbying all this shit right no, now. No, you can't lobby for the right to repair. <laughs> that's insane they protect they, they, their intellectual where, property where have they been have in the video, past 20 years you can't have video games in the library <laughs> that interferes with the protection of intellectual property what was the last thing they lobbied for the the ESA I should also point out is the reason why like it's very is one of the reasons why it's very hard to like have access to classic games because according to them it is the right of the publisher whether or not you should have access to games. Right. Not the fact that, you know, once a game is out there, you should just be able to have access to it. Yeah, I don't like them. <laughs> they, they kind of have fallen <laughs> off. The essay has fallen off since the 90s. Um, yeah. And e- E3 uh, was kind of their last little holdout. And uh, again, they they're there's no reason for that to be around they they ran that into the ground as well there was uh it it, it was run like garbage uh they they had all these weird rules we talk about this all the time they had all these weird rules for people covering the event that changed by the day so you couldn't plan on it uh they opened it up to the public to try to get more money out of people, but it wasn't set up to be open up to the public. It wasn't set up to have that many people there. So it was just horrible. There were like four hour lines for some games and stuff. So it was hard to cover it. And it was it was bad to go see as a show because you had four hour lines for things. Uh, so it was horrible for everybody. 
Um, and then they doxed everybody on the last <laughs> year that they had it. <clears throat> they doxed all of the people who, all the media people. They just gave their home addresses mm -hmm. away. So, so fuck them. They, 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 they handled everything extremely poorly. And again, all these, everybody's all nostalgic for E3. And they're all nostalgic for the announcements and stuff, like watching it from home and seeing all of the announcements happen in one week, which is fun to have it all in one go. You can like rate everybody's announcements against each other and stuff. But all those announcements happened lately. They were happening off site. They were happening at the Xbox yeah. conference, which had, which was not at E3. It was at a different place. At the same it time, as E3, of E3, it piggybacked but... off E3. PlayStation wasn't there the last couple of years. They did their own events mm -hmm. that were also off site at the same time as E3. Nintendo was at the show floor, but their announcements were all online. And, uh, you know, a lot of the other companies did the same thing. So, uh, again, no reason to have E3. The only thing that you mm -hmm. miss, if you miss E3, the only thing you miss is having a bunch of announcements all in one week. I don't want to say that like the people who are nostalgic for E3 are the people who didn't go to E3, um, because I'm sh I'm sure there are people in the the games industry who miss it because that was the time of year where they got to hang out with all their buddies from all around the the industry. I'm sure that there's um, people who went and missed it and didn't get doxxed in 2019. <laughs> yeah, but it does seem like the majority of people who are uh, like nostalgic for it didn't go. <laughs> Yeah, no, it, uh, yeah. Because it, it was it, a pain in the ass. It was a pain in the ass being there. It was a shit show. It wasn't yeah. set up for us to cover it. It wasn't set up for the public. It was It was a disaster. I'm sure it was great, you know, like 20 years ago. But that was before yeah. I even went. Um, and it's okay, it's okay to miss, you know, going out and hanging out with your friends and stuff. But mm -hmm. a, a lot of the people who are nostalgic for it are nostalgic because they watched it on G4 TV when they were a kid or, yeah. or, or they liked uh, leaving uh, IGN's Twitch stream on and watching all the events of the week. Uh, but again, that happened off site. A lot of that happened. It had nothing to do with E3. So uh, 2011 we was Brown versus the Entertainment Merchants Association, which was the Supreme Court case that ruled um, video games are protected on the First Amendment. Um, that was the last good thing the esa did to us <laughs> <laughs> that was 12 years ago 13 yeah. years ago 12 years ago so yeah. uh it's possible the esa crumbles after this too so all right here's here's where i might have a controversial take i think the video game industry does need a lobbying arm mm -hmm. where like it has it's one group that can uh make arguments for the video game industry as a whole in Congress and in government. So like the ESA shouldn't go away, but it needs dramatic reformation mm -hmm. <laughs> if it's going to move forward. Yeah, no, does that make sense? It, no, definitely. It definitely does. But at the same time, I feel like um, the games industry has become too big that uh the individual companies are kind of lobbying for themselves yeah you got microsoft is part of the big three they don't need help you know right you got epic games right now that's lobbying for themselves like <laughs> uh I, a lot's changed since the 90s the 90s they needed or, or even the early 2000s they needed uh, yeah. uh, uh a lobbying arm but i don't know if that's necessary anymore um i well also to the esrb like they they own that. That's important. That's an important thing. To have. Yeah, but unless we just adapt another country's rating, <laughs> no, because like the ESRB has been proven to like that rating system has been proven to be the most effective rating system, the clearest rating system in all of media. Mm -hmm. So, like that probably just has to become completely independent. Yeah. All right. Uh, any more notifications? Uh, nope. All right, let's real quick talk about the Retroid Pocket Four. This was an announcement right. that happened. You talk about that. I gotta get water because my throat is dying. All right, Just have like fun. Three has died. This will be quick anyway. 
Uh, guys, look at it. It's the Retroid Pocket 4. Wow, I bet you weren't expecting this. Retroid Official came out and was like, hey, if case you didn't like the 1, 2, or the 3, here's here's another one. Guess what it's called? The 4. 150 bucks, which is a pretty good price point. Uh, Dimensity 900. I don't. That's the CPU that it's using? Means nothing to me. And then you got the Pro, which is $200, so $50 more. It's got a 100. So the one saving grace here is that they announced both of them at the same time. So if you... Uh, if you're interested, you don't have to get the regular $150 version. You can wait for the $200 version. You don't have to feel like you have some buyer's remorse or something. So that's pretty cool. But otherwise, here we are again, uh, just firing out consoles left and right. Uh, I will try to get my hands on one to make a video, but I'm not happy about it. Um, so what's the big new feature of this one? nothing it's going to be more powerful so so somebody posted benchmarks of this processor versus uh the odin 2 that i just did a video on and the old right. retroid pocket uh it's more powerful than the old retroid pocket and not as powerful as the odin 2 so my best guess is that this will play gamecube games very good and that's it you're not going to play Switch games or anything. The old uh, Retroid Pocket 3 Plus did GameCube games pretty good, but not great. This one will probably play them pretty great. That's a, that's about as much as I could guess from this thing. Otherwise, it's the same fucking thing. It's the same form factor and everything. Uh, yeah, H. Roy says the uh, Dimensity 1100 will handle full PS2 and GameCube library and also has analog triggers. Oh, analog triggers. That's good. So the Odin That's 2 also has analog triggers, and they would not work in uh, in Dolphin for some reason for me. I couldn't I couldn't okay. figure that out. I'm sure I just did something wrong. Um, oh, Wood rated us. Hello, Wood. Hey, just in time for us to talk about Gerard in a minute. <laughs> oh boy. Um anyway, uh so yeah, there's a new retro pocket. That's what we we're talking about. Uh Hey guys, you get to see the other podcast. <laughs> the sticks are the same as the ones in the 2S which are amazing <laughs> sticks. Are they uh, I'm guessing they're hall sensing. I mean, I have the same stance on hall sensing that i've always had it that, like they're good because they don't drift and whatever but you could still have a bad feeling hall sensing stick just because it's hall sensing yeah. doesn't mean it's like the gold standard um so anyway uh d-pad up top bob yeah so the d-pad is at the top and that's great and i do like the retroids form factor uh but i just turn my head to look at my old retroid and the d-pad is also on the top so it's the same as the retroid pocket three this is the Amberneck uh, RG 552, and the D pad is also on the top. <laughs> You're flipped for some reason. I got I to gotta flip you back because I'm using, no. you know what I did? I took the, uh, we haven't done a remote in a while. Uh, I took it's the true. Nintendo podcast layout and just copied and pasted it. <laughs> there you go. Um, anyway, the, the 552 is a dumpster fire. Yeah, we got to we gotta hook you up. <laughs> Well, yeah. you have a Steam Deck now. I hooked you up with a Steam Deck. I do have a Steam Deck now. And also, too, you uh, you put custom firmware. I did put custom firmware on the 5.5.2, so it's a lot so better. But It's better. Yeah. Yes, I do have a Steam Deck now. Also, I use my analog pocket for retro stuff. I will put MU Deck on your Steam Deck. Uh, okay. So I'll, I'll, I'll do... I'm pretty... I mean, you have my micro SD card in there. and that has, a, that has it all set up already. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll get you set up with MU Deck, so you'll have a freaking Steam Deck that can play GameCube and shit. Cool. Anyway, um, there's more uh, freaking uh, retro handheld news. Here you go. You got this yeah. weird looking thing. You got this wacko thing from Amber Dick. Uh, it looks like a Walkman. Like with those MP3 players. Yeah, it's it does. It's got a big old analog stick. And your face buttons. It looks uncomfortable as all hell, but I kind of, yeah. I'm kind of a little into it. 
Yeah, I, that's going to be cramped. I think it's wacky in like kind of a cool way. Because I'm, I'm holding this like this, and that's about as close as you could get to like mm-hmm. what that picture is. And I'm like, I don't know how this is going to how this is going to work long term. I, I kind of like how the screen is vertical. It's just weird in like a in like yeah. a very interesting way. I'm 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 into it. Uh, I mean, that's definitely made for like your vertical shooters, your Galagas, your Space Invaders. Um, Contra Arcade had like a vertical screen. Uh, I a lot of arcade mm-hmm. games have work cool vertically, but I don't know if th- I mean this thing's really tiny. I don't know if it'll be powerful enough to play a lot of those arcade games. Yeah. Um, the lines look like the controllers are detachable. I doubt that. I think that's just a cool little uh, feature. This will probably be a cheap little guy. Anyway, uh, that's it for the old retro news that we had to talk about. Uh, now, I guess we'll talk about Gerard real quick because I feel like okay. I'm being forced to. Because, mm-hmm. uh, I mean, the people in the chat who are asking me to talk about it probably aren't here anymore, uh, which is unfortunate. I I, tw- I responded to someone saying we're going to get to it. I don't, if they're not here anymore. I, I don't I don't blame them for not being here. Uh, yeah. I did make a tweet. Ger- Gerard uh, gave his uh, he gave his two cents back. He he uh, uh, what made his announcement about he his response his response. That's the word I'm looking for. Yeah. Uh, so if you haven't been following, uh, there's been some videos about Gerard the completionist about how he did. Uh, he's been doing charity live streams for a couple of years, and the charity. Uh, seems to have not been giving the money to the people they said they've been giving the money to. It's it's a charity organization that Gerard is a part of that uh, was kind of banking the money and not giving it to the people they were saying they were giving it to. Um, and there were five YouTube videos talking about, uh, talking of, like going through all of his tax documents and st- or going through the company's tax, the organization's tax doc- documents and stuff. And it became this whole big yeah. kerfuffle. Um, and Gerard finally gave his response and said, uh, look, the money was just sitting in an account. We gave it, we gave the money to the, to one organization. We were trying to find a beneficiary, uh, and we gave it. And he's sorry that he misled people into thinking that they were, uh, uh, giving the money when they weren't, which is a big, that's a big issue that they were saying Mm -hmm. that these charity live streams were raising money for a specific charity when they weren't, when it was sitting in an account. Uh, in the original videos that were made, Gerard said that uh, he uh, uh, just learned like last year that uh, the money was sitting in the account and wasn't being given to the charities that they said they were giving it to because the, this organization that Gerard's a part of is run by a bunch of different people. I have no reason not to believe him, but I mean... Believe what you want. We're just going by his word. There's really no proof that could be taken out of that. Um, did you watch some ordinary gamers' response to his response? I haven't had a chance to watch it. I did. I, I watched. I, I watched that. It yeah. was like an hour long, and I had to watch it in chunks. But I, I did see that. Yeah. It was an hour long. It was a lot of just pouring through tax documents. Um, yeah. So it's it's a little boring. <laughs> <laughs> but um, there's some look there's some good points I, I i made a tweet and i said that i think gerard is a good person that uh doesn't deserve uh the um the sort of insane backlash that he's gotten for his mistakes uh, i think he's made a lot of mistakes by saying that he's giving the money when it, they clearly wasn't being given but the money was sitting in a, in a charity account and that's how right. a lot of charities work it's just people don't really get to see the nitty gritty of the charity he could have been a Mm -hmm. lot more upfront about it and probably should have um but he's getting a lot of vitriol for it and uh i think he just i think he's just a guy who shouldn't have been running a charity and found out the hard way about how hard it is and uh made a lot of mistakes and he's now getting death threats (laughs) so (laughs) it's just an unfortunate set of circumstances uh he should definitely never do charity stuff again because he's proven right. that it's it's it he's not capable of it um but on the other hand i do take issue with uh people who are th- there's how do i word this without 
whatever I say is going to get taken out of context. It's just that uh, there's there's an incentive to take a story and make it seem as dire as possible because the video will do better. So the first couple of videos about Gerard, it's like, okay, that's that makes sense. He needs to, you know, speak up about this and, and give his side of the story. The fourth or mm -hmm. fifth video, it's like, all right, now you're trying to spin a narrative that he's like stealing money and shit. And like, that's not, that's now, now people think that he's stolen money. Well, then the recent uh, Mudahar video, he makes it clear that it's not about what's happening with the money. The, it, there's proof that the money is just sitting in an account not doing anything. Mm -hmm. The problem is, the problem was, was that for years, uh, Gerard has, you know, in their words, misled uh, his audience by saying that the money is going to these charities when they have not been. Yeah. Even after Gerard learned that the money had not go gone anywhere, he still kept his narrative going that all the money collected from Indie World was going to the foundations that he name drops on the live streams. Yeah, that's the main problem. Yeah. Does that warrant 50 minutes of going through the rest of his tax documents? <laughs> And trying to spin a narrative that like these tax filings were were set incorrectly, and trying to find where the the money's actually going. You know what I mean? It, it does it require a YouTube video? No. Does it require formal auditing and investigation? Yes, because all you <clears throat> need to do is just let somebody go over everything, make sure. Everything is above board, mm -hmm. you know, because at worst, all he did was tell people the money was going to charity when it wasn't. It was just sitting in an account. Yeah. You know, well, actually, that's at best. At worst, they were using that money for things other than the charity, like uh, reimbursement for running the show or like paying staff and things like that. Yeah, it was already uh, admitted that some of the money was going towards the cost of running the show. Yeah. Um, I think that's which was, the newest which was controversy never... is the, the yeah. bits and donate and, and, uh, and subs and stuff was going towards, uh, right. was going back into Wh running the show when it should have been going to the, the charity, which needed to have been made clear initially. And the fact right. that it wasn't, you know, now opens up this new can of war. Right. And again, I think it's worth bringing up because uh, that first Carl Jobs video, I think, needed to happen. Or at least, at yeah. the very least, Carl Jobs, you know, emailing them and saying, hey, where's this money? It's been sitting in an account. And then the charity was like, yeah. yo, we've been trying to find a beneficiary. You want to help us out trying to find a beneficiary? I think all yeah. that needed to happen because it lit a fire under their ass. Um, but it's it's the the rest of it. Like, at the end of the day... $600 was raised for charity and it's been given to the charity. Right. But there was all that lead up to giving it to a charity that needs mm -hmm. to be looked at. Yeah. And I think that's, I think that's a valid point. I, 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 you know, I'm you're, looking you're, at you're it. You're sitting on $600,000, not doing anything with it. Don't donate it until you get called out for it. I mean, it's not I'm, a good look. I'm looking on it based on intent. And it's right. it was clear negligence on the... Yeah. The, it, it's unclear who's negligent. I mean, Gerard's definitely a little negligent, but it's unclear how much negligent he is because he's just a part of the greater charity. Um, But it doesn't seem like there was an intent to fraud anybody or 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 take the money or anything like that. It just seems like there was just... A mishandling of funds, which is a problem, right? But I don't know if it's a never work in this town again problem. I mean, initially it wasn't. You know, when this first happened, I thought it could easily be remedied by apologizing, explaining your situation, yeah. donating the money, and separating yourself from the people directly responsible for this. 
but you know, I don't know. I don't know anymore because I, I think there are still questions that need to be answered. I think there needs to be more explanation on what happened, why it happened, you know, what the relationship between the Indie land live streams and the golf tournament that was also a part of this. Yeah. That seemed uh, to have that, been, he just seemed to completely distance himself from the, from the golf tournament. Right. Which, which, you know, maybe that's true for all, you know, from my perspective of it, it, it just looks like Gerard because he's the public face of it. Yeah. That's why he's getting all the, the backlash for it. He's probably no more than the spokesman for this yeah. whole thing. It, it'd be like, you know, what, what's an example? It, it'd be like being mad at Brian Cox because you got sick from McDonald's. He just does the commercials. He doesn't actually work at McDonald's. Yeah, it's possible. I mean, the golf tournaments were happening even before he, he was doing the Indy Land stuff. Right. It's possible the golf tournaments have ho- like horrible tax filings and stuff. It's possible the bookings for the golf tournaments are all fucked up yeah. because who knows how that was handled. You know, he had little to nothing to do with it, according to him. I mean, again, we're yeah. just going by his word and stuff. Um I mean, I feel like no matter what he said in his uh, response, he's going to be picked apart and they're going to try to find something to to, to get him on again. Um, right. And they did. So I it's it's not looking it's not looking good for, for that whole situation. I don't know when he's yeah. going to be able to, like, return to normalcy again. But yeah, again, he definitely should not be involved in charity stuff, which he already separated himself from yeah um because the funds were mishandled um but there's a lot more moving parts to it and uh Mm. i i i again don't think that there was any ill intent i think he just handled it extremely poorly and uh that's that's that now he upset everybody by saying that he's going to sue for defamation so so right. now everybody's all in an uproar about that so it's never <laughs> gonna end it is gonna they're gonna find even more shit to drum yeah. up about it so again i don't think he i i i don't think there's ill intent i just think that he fucked up and uh i don't think it's as bad as the backlash that he's received i don't think it's warranted of that but i think it's warranted of a little backlash but it's the internet and you can't be like be mad at this guy a little bit it's got to be all the way yeah. or nothing at all. So it's just it it it's upsetting to me that it has to be that way. And that's why I had to make my tweet saying that I uh, think he's a good person who made a mistake. And then all of a sudden now I'm getting fucking now I'm getting the death threats. Uh, right. I got a I got a tweet from somebody that said, uh, "Tell me why you support uh, uh, defrauding uh, dementia patients." Me. What I support defrauding well, dementia patients. Why do you, Bob? <laughs> as if, as if anybody is taking money from going up to dementia patients, and be like, give me that. Anyway, that's what I had to say. So, I hope you all understand. I'm not over here advocating for Gerard. I'm just saying I I think that. Uh, Anger is uh, warranted, you know, but within reason. And God forbid you have a, a God forbid you have a lukewarm take on something. <laughs> anyway, uh, can we move on? Anybody got anything they want to say? I don't know why K Jack sent me the E3 tweet. We just talked about E3 for like thirty minutes. Uh, they missed the beginning of the show. Oh, sorry, sorry, K Jack. You can scroll back though. I think Gerard does deserve a second chance, but he needs to completely separate himself. He did already, but it's going to be a while till he's able to, yeah. you know, I don't know. Wh- I don't know where he can go from, from, from here. I don't think he's a completely above redemption, but it's going to take a long for that. I think he needs the time to distance himself from this whole event, from the people uh, responsible for it. Um, and just rebuild like, really rebuilt his image from the ground up uh that seems more nuanced than your twitter take to be honest oh yeah well twitter i said He's like got four 280 sentences. characters <laughs> i said i said like four words in the twitter reaction 
Uh, it, it would have been impossible to explain all of that. I in my Twitter response, I tried this. I I used the word mistakes because I wanted to show that I think Gerard made mistakes. I just think that right. you know. I mean, again, Logan a Paul much. Had, Logan Paul did a video with a dead body hanging from a tree, and he's the current WWE United States Champion. So, and how know. much money did he give to dementia research? Am I right? Exactly. <laughs> uh, uh, anyway. He beat Rey Mysterio for that. Right, Legendary so, Rey Mysterio. And you know, becomes... someone wrote that, you know. It's not like he <laughs> actually did that. <laughs> it's still real to me. Damn it. Yeah. He did. He sh Sure, he didn't use the money in a bad way, but he framed it as if he was making these yearly donations and it wasn't the case. The money people thought was actually contributing to the cause wasn't contributing at all. Yes, that is true. And that's bad. Yeah, but uh, it was sitting in an account, and it's there now. So it ended up being used for the charity. Yeah. Some of it went to admin costs, <coughs> which is, I mean, I the problem is he was framing it like it wasn't being used for admin costs, mm -hmm. but it ended up some of it was used for admin costs, like running the event and stuff. Yeah. Which you're kind of like, he's trying to find a charity that isn't going to use it for admin costs, but then he used it for admin costs. Yeah. That's fucked up too. But also, charity still made a bunch of money. So it's like one of those <laughs> things where like, you know, he just framed it very poorly. And for that, he should be reprimanded. But, you know, I just, I, I, I feel bad for how much reprimanding he's getting. Yeah. <clears throat> Anyway, uh, I think we're ready to talk about everybody's favorite topic here. <laughs> oh, boy. Epic versus Google. <laughs> and somehow, Epic won. This is fucked up. We didn't really talk about this as much as we did Apple versus Google. We talked um, about that a lot. Because yeah, because we didn't really care about the app, the the Google one. We were like, this is going to be the same situation as as the Apple one. Yeah. Um, however, uh, three years after Fortnite maker Epic Games sued Apple and Google for allegedly running illegal app store monopolies, Epic has won. The jury in Epic vs. Google has just delivered its verdict, and it found that Google turned its Google Play App Store and Google Play billing service into an illegal monopoly. After just a few hours of deliberation, the jury unanimous, unanimously answered yes to every question put before them, that Google has a monopoly power in the Android app distribution markets and in-app billing services, um, that Google did anti-competitive things in those markets, and that Epic was, uh, Epic was injured by that behavior. They decided Google has an illegal tie between its Google Play App Store and its Google Play billing payment services, too. And that its distribution agreement, uh, Project Hug, deals with game developers uh, and deals with OEMs were all anti-competitive. Google Affairs and Public uh, and Public Policy VP Wilson White said the company plans to appeal the verdict and that the trial made clear that we uh, we comp sorry the trial made clear that we compete fiercely with Apple and its App Store as well as app stores on Android devices and gaming consoles. You can read the full statement uh, down below. In a post on its blog, uh, Epic Games said today's verdict is a win for all app developers and consumers around the world. It proves that Google's app store practices are illegal and they abuse their monopoly to interact, to extract absorbent fees, uh, stifle competition and reduce innovation. It's a historic victory, particularly because Epic mostly lost its fight against Apple two years ago when Judge uh, Yovan Gonzalez Rogers decided that fight had nothing to do with apps. But Epic versus Google turned out to be a very different case. It hinged on secure, uh, it hinged on secret revenue sharing deals between Google smartphone makers and big game developers, ones that Google execs internally believed were designed to keep rival app stores down. It showed that Google was running scared of Epic specifically, and it was all, deci all decided by a jury, unlike the Apple ruling. So... Uh, so th yeah. th that's, I think, the thing is that they kind of, it seems like they learned from the 
Apple ruling, and they took a completely different approach to this uh, to this fight. Yeah, uh, which is why they ended up winning. But it, it, it's just bizarre at at face value because uh, Google allows you to sideload apps, and and Apple doesn't. So the fact that yeah, the fact that Fortnite isn't on Google Play is less of a problem than Fortnite not being on the Apple Store. Yeah, this is what always, like, confused me about this this whole situation, because, like, it's much easier to get Fortnite up and running on an Android device than it is an Apple device. Yeah. You know, you, you can get it from Epic's website. You just download it to your phone and just launch it separately. Um, I think the bigger issue for them was the payment system. You know, in order to make purchases, you had to do it through Google services, not like third party services. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I, um, but even still, like Google touts itself as being a more open ecosystem than iOS does. Um, and yet here they are saying, like, no, you can't do this, 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 and this. I'm hoping that they revisit the Apple verdict then because um that's where the precedent really needs to be set because yeah uh google's is fine google the the google the the android ecosystem is fine if i want to put an app on there that google doesn't want on there i could do it anyway i could just sideload it but yeah uh i mean apple is being uh uh sued for or not sued. I don't know. There's laws in the UK about, or, or, or the European Union are trying to put yeah. implement some laws where you're going to be allowed to sideload apps uh, for for uh, iPhones. Um, and it seemed to work getting them to put USB-C in their new iPhones. So that might work to get uh, us sideloading here in the States for, yeah. for iPhones. Um, but yeah, I hope that uh, this changes some things. This is big news for... Uh, us being able to do what we want with the phones that we own. Mm-hmm. So, have we talked about Grok? Why would we talk about Grok? That's that's no. Twi- that's Twitter's AI. Yeah, everyone's got an AI. I mean, why, why is Grok any better than anybody else's AI? I mean, I like all the memes of like when they ask about Elon Musk, and it just tells the truth about him. <laughs> so. Here's a fun little thing. Me and Hannah were playing uh-huh. a game last night. There's, it's we we got this uh-huh. book. We got this book. It's called Myrtle. It's like okay. It, each page is a murder mystery, and you have to solve it through deduction. <laughs> okay. And one of the clues was um, was here's a ciphered code. You have to decipher it. And the key uh-huh. to the code was just the alphabet backwards. So each letter. Is just the backwards alphabet. Does that make sense? So like Z is A, yes. Y is B. Yes. Okay. And it was a long one. So instead of sitting there and doing it, I asked Chat GPT. And every way that I asked it, it was just nonsense. It couldn't it was it was feeding me back nonsense as if it was the right answer. So what I uh-huh. did was I went to Google and I I typed in backwards alphabet generator and i put it into that and it gave uh-huh. me the right it gave me the right answer okay so my point is chat gpt is a little stupid i was watching vox actually put out a video today about how students are using chat gpt to do their homework mm-hmm. I uh, would. and apparently a lot of teachers and uh, AI busting software can't tell the difference between Rem- AI generated essay and a student written one. Remember when we were in high school and college and all of our teachers said, do not use Wikipedia? Yeah. And what did we do? We went right to Wikipedia and clicked on the sources and just used those. Yeah. People don't know how to plagiarize anymore. <laughs> yeah. So, like, I mean, it's just, uh, this is the new Wikipedia. But. Yeah. You have to know a little bit about the subject because, again, it could just you tell yes. you the wrong answer with confidence. Yeah. And that, that they brought that up in the video. Like, it'll tell you the wrong answer, but because you don't know any better, you think that's the right answer and you will present it as the right answer with confidence. I saw a video about a guy who said that you can ask uh, an AI, um, I have three wet towels 
if one of them takes if one wet towel takes an hour to dry how long will three wet towels on a clothesline take to dry and it'll say mm-hmm. three hours but it's really it's one hour it's just it's one hour yeah just, you know it's, it's fucking it's dumb it's a little dumb sometimes sometimes yeah, yeah, yeah. it's great but sometimes it's a little dumb and i'm sure that the kinks right. will get worked out eventually but uh right now it's uh you gotta be Not you so got much. you gotta use it within reason and be able to navigate it it's kind of like how you know growing up we learned how to use google and a lot of our friends and a lot of older people just never learned how to use google um yeah people are going to learn how to use ai and some people aren't and uh that's just how how it's going to be anyway um anything else about the google versus epic um Real quick, I'll just add that um, it's not clear what Epic what Epic has won. Uh, that's up to Judge James Dontano, who will decide the appropriate remedies uh, in the future. Epic never sued for monetary damages. It wants the court to tell Google that every app developer has total freedom to introduce its own app stores and its own billy systems on Android. And we don't yet know how or even when, whether the judge might grant those wishes. Both parties will meet uh, with the judge in the second week of January to discuss potential remedies. Interesting. Yeah, I don't know what this is going to mean for uh, Epic or for people who are making apps on the Google Play Store, but uh, or even for you know the Apple App Store. Yeah, this is honestly mo- because it, it, it's that's the biggest problem is the is the yeah. Apple uh, App Store. That's where the things need to change. All right. Anyway, uh, we got to move pretty fast here we got uh ftc is still trying to block the xbox and activision merger what's happening here that this is why they didn't announce that uh blade is xbox exclusive by the way yeah uh reuters story on the situation says that the ftc lawyer uh imad abed uh argued in front of a three judge appeals court in california on wednesday december 6th that original attempts to block the deal were held Uh, to too high of a standard by requiring a government agency to prove the deal was anti-competitive. According to Abid, the inherent monopoly risk that comes with giant corporations buying each other should be apparent, and Microsoft has already kept Bethesda's games like Redfall and Starfield exclusive to PC and Xbox after its acquisition in 2021, but that wasn't enough to stop the deal from going through in the EU and Britain. Uh, I fail to understand how giving somebody a monopoly of something would be pro-competitive, uh, he said during uh, the hearing, according to CNN. It may be a benefit to some class of consumers, uh, but it is a fairly different. But it is very different than saying it is pro-competitive. So, I mean, <clears throat> I don't think this is going to do anything. I, I mm. they, they, this happens all the time. Here, here in America, yeah. uh, the corporations always win. <laughs> yeah, USA, USA, <laughs> USA. This isn't gonna, this isn't gonna do much at all for for, for the no. FTC versus Activision. Anyway, yeah. Uh, let's plow through the rest of this. But we did get notifications. We got uh, where are we? We got GT DEX. Thank you for the nine months. We got Nintendo Stand. Thanks for a hundred bits. I hope Netflix turns into a show. What does that mean? Turns it into a show? What were we oh, the, about? I think he's talking about the Gerard situation. Oh, great. You know what I want, though? I want the FTC <laughs> uh, Activision situation to be a show. I want the Epic versus Apple to be a show. What I really want is... Mm. Uh, what do I want? I want the the shit that happened. I wanted to see a documentary on the shit that's going on with uh, Metroid. That's completely mm. out of left field. Anyway, I want to see, I want to see a documentary on the Intellivision Amico. I think that yes. that would be good prestige TV. Yes. Um, I would like to see, you know, it's not next, but the whole day before fiasco. I think will be good television one day. Oh, but, we can make yeah. that next. Let's make that next. You want to just make it next? Yeah, because we got to plow through these. Uh, the day before fiasco. The day before Saga explained from Steam's most wish- wishlisted game to the end of a studio. I don't see how this becomes uh, the most wishlisted game. 
Who thought this was interesting? <laughs> uh, well, let's see. Uh, the day before story started almost three years ago when a trailer for the open world survival MMO appeared on most notably shared by IGN. The trailer, which included scripted player comms and a voiceover explanation of the game, drew immediate comparisons to The Last of Us and The Division for its P- PvPVE format, scavenging mechanics, and city setting. I'm remembering While this some now. commenters at the time were skeptical that the final game would look as good, the graphical impressive demo was enough to sell people on the idea of survival MMO with a AAA sheen and, and propelled day before into Steam's top wishlisted games list where it sat for two years. Most okay. wishlisted? Yeah. I, I find that, I mean, uh, it's really just generic. I mean, people people are impressed by shiny things. If the day <laughs> before's narrative announcement trailer looked too artificial, the 13-minute gameplay trailer that debuted on IGN in April 2021 might have convinced you otherwise. The trailer showed off... Um, the day before will be like outside the big city, mud tra- mud trucking, fixing flat tires, blah 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 blah. Okay. Uh, first release date uh, is dropped to be October. Uh, sorry, the first the first release date given was June twenty first, twenty twenty two. Then it was announced it would be delayed uh, one month before release. Then uh, the developer, Fantastic, is criticized for using unpaid volunteers to do work. Just one month before the big delay, one month after the big delay, sorry, uh, Fantastic put out a call for volunteers willing to help get the uh, the day before over the finish line. People had already taken notice of the studio's quirky communication style, but this was the first time uh, it got them in trouble. There seems to be a misunderstanding around Fantastic's uh, special definition of volunteer, uh, but it did admit some of its employees were unpaid help. That, nothing happened in that trailer then, that I a- just showed. <laughs> that he like shot one guy. Right. Uh, after six months of silence, uh, Fantastic promises to show some gameplay before release. Uh, Fantastic finally announced its share uh, video in January that would showcase a majority of features and gameplay elements requested by our community. Let's uh, just let's just. Then skip there was a second the, delay. Just skip to the game came yeah. out and it sucks and everybody hates it. <laughs> and, and there, it looks like nothing happens in the game. There's like barely any bad guys. <laughs> there's i think a two-hour tutorial so you can't even refund the game when you start to actually play the game well it comes out it's broken uh it it immediately shot to the top sellers of steam but only a fraction of those players uh, could successfully play the game those who could play notice something unexpected it wasn't an open world survival mmo uh it's format of uh gearing up in a hub zone Deploying to an open world and then extracting your gear uh, back home resembled more of an extraction shooter. The realization was the last straw for many, but uh, but for the writer, it was the day before his terrible shooting, boring world, uninteresting characters that led them to uninstall after an hour. Uh, Fantastic gave a statement uh, saying that after four days of release on the market, they were shutting down, citing the financial failure of the day before and its miscalculated capabilities. Uh, there still are a lot of unknowns around abrupt shuttering, uh, but it's clear that this is no normal studio shutdown. Uh, they haven't just ceased operations. It's seemingly trying to erase any evidence that it ever existed. You can no longer buy the day before. Every video on Fantastic's YouTube page is gone, as is nearly every voice and text channel on the official on the official Discord server. The situation is still unfolding and there will be updates later. Um yeah. So yeah. they released the game and then they're like, "Now nah, we're gone." <laughs> That's interesting because even if a game is this dramatically bad, you're going to get hate uh hate like players. You're going to get people who are playing the game right. just because they want to see how dramatically bad that it is and people are going to buy it. Yeah because of the memes so like it's yeah. interesting that they decided that it was more worth it to shut the whole company down and erase everything than it would be to try to salvage some funds and get the hate well the, the, the hate buys 
I think the fact that they're shutting everything down mm-hmm. and trying to erase their existence is leading a lot of people to think scam. Like that this was not a serious development process. These are just people trying to make a quick buck. And it was a lot harder than they thought to put out a game. That's why it took, you know, so long. Oh, well, they definitely weren't going to work anymore on it. I mean, the thing is that this company didn't have anything before this. They had Prop Night. Yeah. That was it. And that only recently came out. So, uh, well, I wasn't planning on playing this anyway, so. Yeah. Good riddance. I'm sure most people people weren't, but. Anyway, uh, we got to plow through the rest of these. Suicide Squad will have an all- offline mode. Okay. Yay. Uh, but not until after it's been released. Oh, God. So in the in the official uh, um, Discord chat, uh, Rocksteady Rep said, in addition to our latest trailer, uh, which was shown at the Game Awards, we also have some news to share. We're happy to confirm we are planning an offline story mode that will give players the option to experience the main campaign without an internet connection. We are aiming to add this update in 2024 and we'll provide more details when available. So yeah, it's the game comes out in February. So the when, by saying we aim to add this update in 2024 means that it's not coming in February. Yeah. It's probably going to come by the end of the year. Well, that sucks. But you can still play, like, you can still play single player. It's just you need an internet connection. Correct. Uh, It doesn't suck for me because that just means I have even more of an incentive to wait to play it. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Um, Next, Bungie devs say atmosphere is soul crushing. Uh, This is is something Uh, I wanted to bring up with uh, the Game Awards. Keeley should have yes. said something about the uh, layoffs, the mass layoffs. I'm disappointed that there wasn't a you moment. Really should have. There wasn't yeah. a moment to talk about all of that stuff. Yeah. Um, I probably should have summarized this article before because <laughs> it's a lot. We don't have to um, talk about it. We can just say that it seems like. Uh, well, what happened at Bungie? They laid off like a bunch of people, and it seems like they're not doing. They too laid good. off. Yeah, they laid off a lot of people. Um, the last few Destiny releases have been have not lived up to expectations, um, and, and it's and gotten I, to the point. Sorry, I, I think that Sony is putting pressure on them to uh, do do things differently. Well, the article points out that the next Destiny expansion, the Final Shape, mm-hmm. basically, if they do, if it does not hit the proper metrics the you know the right amount of income what will happen is sony will dissolve bungie's independent board and basically take over the company completely because right now bungie still acts independently of sony but if they don't hit their numbers sony's going to take the, take them over entirely that's horrible all Bungie wanted was independence, and now they're <laughs> they're like back to square one. And this again. is the price of independence. Like they don't, yeah. like you know, things things are getting bad. It's it's gotten to the point where they've had to, you know, part of the reason why they laid off people is for, you know for quote unquote co- cost cutting measures, but they're also like uh, f- cutting off uh, benefits, uh, mental health focused activities that they have over there um bonuses are getting cut you know they're they're doing all of these things that like it's just crushing morale left and right at the and they company got, and they got new games they got uh a marathon or whatever they marathon got, they got new games coming out so they, there's there's a lot going yeah. on over there and they had massive layoffs. yeah uh anyway uh jim ryan got a ps1 themed ps5 yeah, this is real quick. Jim Ryan, uh, the outgoing president, or sorry, the outgoing CEO of Sony, of PlayStation, uh, was gifted a one-of-a-kind PlayStation 1-themed PlayStation 5. It looks awesome. I want it, but I can't have it because only Jim Ryan has it. Who made it? Uh, Ooh, the controller port. I don't cool. know. I didn't realize that. That's the coolest part. I know, right? That's the. I feel like that's the best part. That's the best part. 
I think it was just somebody at Sony, like the Sony team, uh, commissioned it. Well, that's cool. It looks cool. I mean, it kind of just looks like a skin, but the the controller port is the part. Yeah. I, I mean, the controller itself too is also like that PlayStation gray, and, it, and the buttons are colored. You know what? I, I was thinking like I've seen this before, but it was the PS4. They did a PS4 version of this. Yes. Yeah. Oh, even the box is PlayStation One themed. Yeah, it's it's cool. It's kind of cool. All right, the last yeah. thing is Free Radical shuts down the people who are doing time splitters. Oh no. Yes. Oh, and this this sucks because this is part of Embracer Group, and there we talk about like corporate, you know, shenanigans mm-hmm. punishing people who shouldn't be punished. Uh, because of Embracer Group's financial problems, they just decided. We'll shut down Free Radical. You're not getting your Time Splitters trilogy, Will. Fuck you. <laughs> that sucks. So who's it's, who's going to get and, the uh, license? Embracer Group. They own it. That sucks. You know, they just the game studio that makes Time Splitters isn't going to make Time Splitters anymore. What have they been doing? It, it's It's not so cut and dry. So Free Radical... They made Time Splitters, and then they made Haze for the PlayStation 3, which was a financial disaster, so they shut down. Mm-hmm. But before they shut down, Crytek bought them and turned them into Crytek UK, and they helped with um, Crisis and some other games. And then uh, Deep Silver bought them, turned them back into Free Radical, and then Embracer Group bought Deep Silver, Oh, and then here we are. Yeah. Okay. So it wasn't really the, the worst same part about anyway. it is, yeah, uh, this wasn't even like properly announced. Their website goes to a 404 not found, and uh, developers who work there were tweeting out like, "I lost my job." <laughs> oh God. Yeah. It it yeah. it seems like that wasn't the same free radical that was making time splurs anyway. It was just a shell of its former self. <sighs> yeah. It's it's just it's it sucks that people are being punished for bad business decisions made at the top, Mm -hmm. you know, like, I don't know if you saw, but like this week, Hasbro is laying off a thousand people. Oh, my God. Because, yeah, you know, meanwhile, I think their CEO is making like ten million dollars this year. Like, why? Why have your bad business decisions rewarding you but punishing you know everyone else below you it's corporate america baby yeah and it sucks because like oh in this room alone i got like how many fucking gi joe and indiana jones and star wars marvel figures all from them i did my part (laughs) all right i don't know if this is gonna work but here you go quit of the week quit of the week quit of the week might be extremely loud (laughs) Sorry about that. Uh, we got Tweet of the Week time. And here it is. Hey. This this is a uh, hard drive. One last reveal, utters Jeff Keighley before peeling back face to reveal circuitry underneath. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like a Westworld reference or something. I think that's Westworld, yeah. Very cool. Uh, all right. Yeah. Now we will talk to you guys. Yes. Let's start with people who left comments on last week's Wolf Den Podcast over on the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Wolf Den Podcast. I'm actually going to read the notifications. Will, I think you should leave the Discord and come back because you're chopping around everywhere. And I think that fixes it. All right. It. Let me. All right. Give me one Goodbye. second. Uh, we got Funyuns are tasty. Thanks for the 10 months. I got married. Oh, my God. Congratulations. I hope it was well. Uh, Mecha Dragon, thanks for the four months. What are some of your favorite videos you've made recently, Bob? Favorite videos? I try not to look at them too much. <laughs> I try not to look at the videos I've made too much. Once I make, once I put it out, I just stop thinking about it. You know, I recently did just uh, when I heard that E3 was dead. I actually went back and I watched your video uh, from 2020 about why you're glad there was no e3 that year Mm -hmm. it was just it was very like it reminded me like you know 
yeah, like there was the myth of E3, you know, oh, it's this cool place where all the video games are coming out and you get to learn about them before everyone else. But the reality was just such a pain in the ass. Yeah, I uh, thank you. I, I, uh, <laughs> I did that last year when, when E3 got canceled last year. I watched part of that video back. Uh, yeah. And I always liked to link that video. Uh, when I talk about how much I hate E3 because that's a mm-hmm. great explanation of it. But, you know, I can't expect people to watch a 20 minute video every time I right. say that I hate E3. Um, but yeah, I think uh, that video also goes into detail about like how much of a pain the ass it was to cover it and like uh, how you showed up with your giant camera and that was fine, but my little <laughs> tiny camera was a problem. Yeah, <laughs> I'm still like trying that. to figure that one out. There, yeah, there was a lot of footage from us when we were actually there. Um, anyway. Uh, what else do we have? We got uh, DJ Skeletor. Thanks for the five gifted subs. But Bob, it's still sad. Like E3 is a huge part of childhood gaming. So what? You know what it else was... is a huge part of childhood gaming? Not being able to save. <laughs> yeah. You know what? I'm glad <laughs> doesn't happen anymore. Not being able to save. There will be a new thing that takes the place of E3 that is going to be just fine for everybody. You know, yeah. like like it's it's fine that E3 doesn't exist. We'll get our announcements. We'll get our commercials somehow. Yeah. <laughs> um. All right. Uh, that's all the notifications. Now I am going to look at the comments from last week's Wolf Den podcast. And Will's going to look all weird on the screen when I do that. We got Spaceman Spiff. Uh, all I want for Christmas is a Wolf Den mug. Also, make a video, please, Will. Okay. <laughs> well, you're not getting a mug for Christmas. You'll be lucky to get a desk mat for Christmas. I have no idea where they are. <laughs> I'm getting worried. Uh, they were supposed to be here now, and they're not, and I'm scared. Um, hopefully, they're any minute now, they'll they'll be here. Uh, Mr. Pav the Sav says, right after Bob said, so I tweeted, I got... Um, Michael's ad that screamed, it's Michael's big holiday sale. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. Um, uh, L- Lost Tech Wet Lights ew, says, anyone else watching this here used to watch it live and want to comment stuff to them or is it just me? Okay. Congratulations. You got to talk to us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, not an RPG guy. Oh, look who it is. Said, uh, no, I need Bob to make a 2023 gift guide for the, for his biennial biennial cover of the Charlie Brown Christmas song. Oh, I did that last year. <laughs> Banal? Christmas time is here. Something, something cheer. That's all I got. Good enough. And then, and then Fred took a screenshot of this one that says, oh, it's backwards. Uh, Bob left the Nintendo podcast to focus on the backlog. And then there's a reply to that that says, remember, the backlog is never over. It's just always on hiatus. It's true. Yeah, it's true. All right, we're in the chat real quick. It's late. We got to get out of here. I'm yeah. hungry. Tomorrow is my nine-year wedding anniversary. Oh, my God. GT Dex. Thank you so much. Thank you? Why am I thanking you? Congratulations. (laughs) (laughs) We all have to thank Nintendo for being the catalyst for the death of E3. No. No. Well. Kind of PlayStation. Well, no, because Nintendo, like, they, you know, their Nintendo Directs have basically been the inspiration for everyone else going independent can you you imagine that nintendo being ahead of the time can you imagine that (laughs) i know um bob do you have the rg35xx plus it is right here i actually just filmed a video on it uh i just played the entirety of the original the original professional Look, man, if they release custom firmware for this thing in the next day, I'm going to be fucking pissed because the whole <laughs> video is me talking about how I wish there's custom firmware because uh, yeah. it's not that good. It's 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 great in the same way that the original was great, but the systems that they added to it are not 
uh they don't play well like so this thing is the same thing as the old thing that i used to have but it now it plays ds and n64 and psp but it plays them all pretty bad so uh i don't know if it's worth the upgrade garlic os 2.0 uh, is already on it i'm gonna fucking lose my mind wait no it's not we just had black seraph on the podcast it's coming but garlic 2.0 isn't ready okay all right good it's not it's an early alpha okay i'll, I'll yeah i i appreciate that uh what podcast by the way what do you what podcast uh gavin gidry illustrator of superman the metal curtain superman 78 the metal curtain asks will have you read any of the skybound hasbro comics yet uh no i'm waiting for the gi joe books to come out i've heard transformers is excellent uh, and I've heard Void Rivals is really cool, but I'm waiting for uh, Duke and Cobra Commander to come out, and then I think I'm going to start following those. Oh, uh, Ace Shrios in the chat is with Retro Handhelds. Oh my god. Good work you do over there. Good to know. Thanks for being here. Uh, Gavin, hello. Thanks, uh, all, all you people, thanks for being here gotta get a retroid pocket four to replace my rp3 to replace my rp2 i'm so i'm so sick of these things i'm thinking i gotta start just putting my foot down and not covering some of them i mean yeah <laughs> it's getting ridiculous um i did mention in my video of the rg35xx plus i mentioned keep an eye out for black seraph i'm sure he's working on something <laughs> <laughs> and I'll, I'll update the description of the video when when there is new stuff um retro game core just did a video about the rp4 announcement i'm i'd like to see that i'm curious what his take on that is i got it on mine because taking Ta taki udon had it in his video but it makes sense <coughs> that it's in alpha because i didn't like it very much are you talking about the the garlic okay all right. I guess I should leave a footnote saying that it's in alpha. So what didn't you like about it? I, I need to know what's wrong with it. He's on vacation with his wife. We're actually porting it live in a few weeks. Porting what live? Also, who's on vacation with his wife? Uh, Retro Game Core or Black Seraph? I hope Black Seraph's on vacation with his wife because that'd be great because that means my video won't be out of date in two days. <laughs> <laughs> Galactic 2 Point doesn't have access to the GPU yet? Oh, that sounds horrible. <laughs> that sounds like a major yeah, thing. Yeah, that's the fucking point of that then. <laughs> God. Just found an old Wii. Is it worth buying a controller and modding it? Maybe. I mean, a lot of people talk about uh, how... I mean, I had friends who modded a Wii when the Wii was relevant, you know, the, the yeah. plugging a hard drive in and playing whatever games you wanted. So if you want to play Wii games, then sure. But otherwise, uh, there's yeah, plenty I, I don't of see different ways you can play those types of games. I know a uh, co-worker of mine said he um, he actually put a mod chip in the Wii, but I know that it's possible to mod it via software. So mm -hmm. it depends on what your skills are. Uh, Tynology says mod Wii for GameCube games. That's true. But now there's like yeah. the, 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 the Raspberry Pi mod for, uh, GameCube and stuff. There's a lot of, there's so many great ways to play GameCube. Like I'm not even, yeah. people keep asking me if I want to mod, do the Raspberry Pi mod for the GameCube. And it's like, why would I even bother? I can play GameCube on so many different things. Hmm. All right. Uh, I guess we're good. Okay. Guys, thanks for being here. Thanks for hanging out, everybody. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching us. Thank you for chatting with us. As always, the Wolf Den Podcast is every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern right here on twitch.tv slash Wolf If you can't make the show for any reason at all, we always put it up as an archive version over on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Wolf Podcast. So you can go and check us out over there on demand whenever you want. But if you prefer to listen to us rather than watch us, you can do that as well because we're on also an audio podcast on any and every podcast service, including Apple Podcasts, Spotify, 
and apparently audible.com. But no matter where you get the show from, <laughs> folks, please be sure to subscribe, rate, and review us because that helps us with placement on all of those respective platforms. Uh, I'll be on hopefully Thursday. Uh, I don't think I'll be on tomorrow, but uh, I did. I didn't stream on Sunday when I wanted to because uh, I was I was deathly ill. But uh, I'm back, baby. So I'll have a video on Thursday, hopefully Thursday, about the RG three five XX. I'm a little late on uh, giving the footage over to be edited, so uh, it might be a hot minute. But uh, anyway, uh, we're gonna raid Miss Click. We haven't raided her in a hot minute, and she's on right now. So go watch that go over there and say hi. And we'll see you later, hopefully in person next week. Um, bye. Bye.